What up guys, it's Brinks, and welcome to the beginning of the end. If you haven't heard the news, the game is dying, everyone has moved on to Tekken, and this game is a terrible, unfinished cash grab that is worse than MK11. Okay, but jokes aside, while most of that is hyperbolic Twitter brain rot, there is a shred of truth buried amongst all the complaining, and that is that the game could be in a much better state than it currently is. It's no secret that the online has problems and the offline game modes are quite lacking as well. Like, who was Invasions even made for? But that's not what I want to talk about in this video. I love this game, specifically the actual core fighting game aspect of it, but it could be better, and that's what I want to talk about. There's been a lot of discussion from prominent community members about how NRS needs to open up the game, both the characters and the cameos. And I agree completely, but everyone seems to have their own meaning when they say this, so I'm going to tell you what I think would be the best approach for them to take in opening everything up. So to start the discussion, cameos are the identity of this game, and the newest version of variations from the previous two MKs, Quintality. and as such will make or break the long-term success of Mortal Kombat 1. The intention with variation seems to have always been to let people sort of customize their playstyle that they wish to have for their character, and cameos seem like they were meant to be an even more customizable version of that, since now you can essentially apply any variation moves to any character. Unfortunately, the problem with this becomes evident when you look at the gameplay of many characters in this game. To be more specific, it feels like some characters were designed to function on their own without cameos, while other characters feel like an MK11 character that never had their variation moves chosen. A couple good examples of this are Kung Lao and Scorpion. Both characters feel like they're just missing a couple moves or tools and don't have much of an identity on their own. Let's switch over to training mode so I can show what I mean. Lao is the safe launching armor guy, and that's only with a cameo like Goro. As far as options in neutral go, he doesn't have much going for him by himself. His hat toss isn't really for zoning, as it's slow and has a cooldown. His dive kick is a good gap closer and burst option, but his rush down and up close pressure isn't anything special or unique. So, it's kinda like putting a really good steak sauce on a cheap dollar store steak. There's only so much heavy lifting the sauce can do if the meat is low quality. I suppose his spin is certainly unique, but in a way that I'm really not sure what purpose it's meant to serve. As if you switched out the steak sauce for the I don't know chocolate frosting? Sure it's unique, but like, why? And the rest of his strings and specials, to continue with the analogy, are instant mashed potatoes with no butter. He's just a very bare-bones character that seems to be lacking a special trait or gimmick that really defines his playstyle before factoring in cameos. The most unique thing he has is a safe armor move, which can obviously launch with certain cameos. And that's not really an interesting mechanic for an entire character to be based around. To give two examples from the other end of the spectrum, Smoke and Johnny Cage are both characters that have multiple unique and strong options to play around. And since we all like Smoke over on this channel, we're going to take him as an example. His back forward 3 cancel by itself gives him a lot of freedom in how you can structure your pressure and combos. And on top of that, he has his air teleport cancel which side switches, or full screen teleport attacks with various properties. And two ways to go fucking invisible, one stationary and one that's a teleport. Both of which give him actual low overhead mix along with all the other weird mobility and cancel gimmicks. He's a very complete character that feels like he can choose from a variety of cameos because he's fully functional by himself with a plethora of cool options unique to him. And that is the key to opening up this game and what I think NRS needs to strive for. They need to make everyone like Smoke. Or rather, 
to sit down with each character and try and give them a complete identity and just let them be crazy on their own before even thinking about cameos. You want the steak to be good enough to not even need sauce. And that makes it so much better when you find a sauce that really goes well with it. I'm not familiar enough with every character to really give specific suggestions for most of them, but I do want to take Sub-Zero as an example. While I don't think he's bare bones like Lao or Scorpion, he specifically feels like they gave him an identity but then threw a bunch of restrictions and safeguards in the mix for some reason, leaving him as this weird jack-of-all-trades character that doesn't really excel in any area and seems confused as to what he's meant to be. Like, they took an acceptable, lightly seasoned steak and then chopped it up and threw it in a bowl of Walmart brand Fruit Loops with almond milk. Based on most of his tools on paper, he should be the game's trap zoner type character and therefore should be balanced around Ice Clone set play and his zoning and neutral control. So I want to do a little theory crafting and try and turn the current version of Sub into a character that is as functional as Smoke or Johnny. To start, it's wild to me that he has no meterless launching ability without cameos or a raw back too. If you get a punish with any of his strings, the most you'll get without spending resources is the full string or just two hits into slide or clone punch. This is also something I feel should be fixed about multiple other characters too, but in general, most, I think, of the roster doesn't have this problem, and generally have quite a few ways of getting actual full combos off of any of their strengths. Smoke obviously being the best example of this. I just think every character, regardless of playstyle, should have meterless combo options if they get a big punish. I'm not asking for Sub to do 40% meterless combos off of his jab, but, if he could convert a big forward 1-2 punish into like a 25% juggle without spending the resources that he should be saving for EX clone setups and neutral control, then I don't see an issue with that. So I feel like at least forward 1-2 should have enough advantage to meterlessly combo into Ice Ball, or just make Ice Ball slightly faster, which would also improve his zoning a bit. You could increase the scaling on it so that he's not breaking 30% combos with it, but I think he should still be able to full combo off of his bigger whiff punish strings without cameos or meter, just like most of the roster can. I would also keep EX ground freeze the same, that way ice ball combos can be the scaled lower damage meterless combos, and EX ground freeze can be the higher damage but higher cost combos. For the rest of his tools, I would make clone push go full screen and be slightly less negative on block. To add to his trap and set play abilities, I would also give him the ability to enhance the clone push at any point during travel, which would then cause it to freeze in place and function as a normal ice clone for a couple seconds. It would cost a bar, but it would let him actually set up traps and control different aspects of the screen in unique ways. As for ice clone, I'd like them to just make it last slightly longer, let sub be actionable as soon as he hits the ground, so he's not super punishable, and just remove the cooldown. If Johnny can bully you with plus frame staggers all day, and Smoke can do custom block strings with his cancels, why is it so bad if Sub has actually threatening zoning and set play tools? Especially if they make his tools all strong enough on their own that he doesn't rely on low hat so much. It opens him up to being able to experiment with different cameos, which is the actual point of the cameo mechanic in the first place. Like, imagine for a sec if they buffed Frost to be this weird zoning and trap cameo and gave Sub an actual screen presence that he doesn't require Serena or Lau, they could be an interesting pair with a playstyle that no other team combo would have. Who cares if it might be annoying to fight? It's a fighting game. Every character except your own character is annoying. We all know how it works. I really think they need to apply that kind of thinking to the whole roster. Basically, figure out what each character's gimmick or identity should be and how they can make it crazy so that every character is fun and also unique enough to play that you don't care how stupid the character you're fighting against is. And then they need to do the same with the cameos, with an even bigger focus on making them unique from each other, and then cranking it all to 11. 
To do another fun little experiment where we give some crazy buffs to a character, let's take Goro for example. I really think that this should be the Grappler cameo. As in the cameo you pick if you want your character to have Grappler options on top of what they can already do. You can probably keep the up punch the same, but please make the grab an actual mid-command grab. Maybe have a little more damage scaling on it so it's not leading to super high damage combos for a grab. But with that change alone, you would have characters that could probably tick throw into Goro off of certain pokes or strings. That alone would completely change up characters' offense and how they think about pressure with this specific cameo. And the usual way to avoid a command grab is to jump. So that's where the up punch would come in. Other than improving his cooldowns across the board, the only thing I would do with punch walk is shorten the summoning animation for it. That way, characters could potentially get some combos from it on hit, but more importantly, it would function as a sort of plus on block special. And since it's still a summon, you couldn't just use it like a Cyrax chopper to cover your unsafe special move and you would actually have to cancel into it from a normal. It would just give you a lot of plus frames to set up some ignorant grappler-esque bullshit in the spirit of the archetype. I'm still unsure how to fix Stomp, though maybe just keep it as is with a faster cooldown and more damage so it can be a YOLO option that still requires the full bar. After these crazy changes, Goro would now have an identity as THE Grappler cameo and would have use for more than just his up punch. He would probably be very strong with certain characters, but not all of them. Especially if the other cameos were brought up to be equally crazy and doing their own uniquely crazy things. If you gave the same treatment to all the cameos, to the point that there'd actually be debate as to which cameo is best for each character, you'd suddenly have way more variety in the meta and a lot more room for player expression and preference. And even if there are still definitive best cameos for characters, if every cameo gives you cool stuff that the others don't, then there's still a great reason to play them, even if they're not technically the meta cameo for your character. Like, maybe in this fantasy version of the game, Smoke's best cameo would be Movado because of his whip moves letting Smoke just zip around the screen with crazy mobility, letting him force mix on you all the time. But you could still have a blast playing Smoke with this new Goro, because you could do your glue eating cancel pressure and you'd have a fucking command grab to throw out during all of that. Or you could block string into punch walk and then safely go invisible while Goro is just slapping the opponent across the stage. In my opinion, that is how they need to open up the game. Make every character strong enough to function without cameos, and then make every cameo bring their own unique flavor of bullshit to whichever character they're paired with. The game would be obnoxious and crazy, but it's basically a fucking assist game, so that's how it should be if they wanted to have any kind of long-term presence. Besides, some characters are already obnoxious and crazy, but many of them aren't, so they either need to continue watering down everyone so no one gets to do anything cool, which I promise no one actually wants, or the preferable approach is to just bring all the characters up to the crazy and obnoxious level and then blow out the ceiling. You can do your crazy shit while I try to hit you with my crazy shit. And that's basically what fighting games are all about. You want players to have so much fun doing cool bullshit with their character that they're willing to put up with the bullshit their opponent can do. Fire. To give a personal example of this, I come from competitive Smash. I started competing in Smash 4, and I still do in Smash Ultimate. I've played Greninja all through the lifespan of both games. There are maybe one or two characters in Ultimate that I actually enjoy fighting against. I fucking despise just about every character, and I fucking adore playing Greninja and all the dope shit that I can do with him and his crazy mobility and cool combos. So I just don't care how stupid the other characters are because mine is a blast and no amount of annoying, dumb, spammy DLC characters can take that away from me. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. That was super sick. And, and that takes Brinks to set. Yeah. Two oh, over Fantastic stuff. Hell, they kind of had it that way in MKX too, which people are still very fond of. Even though it's heavily weighted towards offense, 
Everyone is despicable in that game, and while some variations are less interesting, most of the characters have at least two variations that are quite different from each other, while still being fun and effective to play. I say this as a Spectral Ermac player that started with Master of Souls. So to wrap all this up, I think Mortal Kombat 1 would be so much more fun and interesting if they leaned into that design philosophy much harder. Just stop being afraid of having annoying playstyles. Johnny and Smoke are already obnoxious and annoying, so who cares if there's owners, grapplers, and trap characters that are equally stupid. It's a fighting game. I promise I'm going to complain and hate the other character I lost to no matter what. I know I'm not alone in that. So at least allow the other characters the freedom to do their own cool shit. I would much rather a timeline where Sub-Zero is beating my ass full screen and baiting me into clones left and right. Or where Kung Lao is teleporting up to me and locking me down with weird hat trick pattern block pressure than having 90% of the characters doing easy bake delayed low head into overhead mix because that's the only way for their character to actually open you up or be a threat. Thanks for watching guys, comment below if you have any thoughts on this topic, I would love to hear everyone else's take on opening up the game, especially if you're knowledgeable on the rest of the roster and have any specific buffs or fun redesign ideas like mine, or if you disagree with any of what I said, would love to hear that too. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy and want to see more commentary-esque stuff like this or more of the guide videos I'm working on. But uh, otherwise, take care guys. Later.